Um, mm -hmm. So let's go on to the next question. Um, Nicole wanted clarification on whether raw egg and sardines can be added to kibble to start the transition off of, so from kibble to a fresh food diet, since Dr. Brady discussed how kibble alters digestion. I think it was meat and bone only, but clarification would be great. And any specific pre-probiotic recommendations would be helpful. Um, so we'll definitely, let's kind of talk a little bit. There's a lot of talk about uh, eggs, raw eggs, and how great of a food source are is what are some of the recommendations you make Dr. Odette for your patients if you are looking at transitioning away from a processed food diet onto either a fresh food or even a raw food diet? Well, I usually go directly for it. Uh, I mean, obviously with a bit of a transition period of seven to, you know, one to three weeks or so, it depends on, on the animal, the age of the animal, their, their condition and everything. Um, so, I usually just, because most most people don't really want to make the food their, themselves, at least in my practice, I don't really get a ton of people who want to make it themselves. So I just recommend that they purchase one of the good quality raw foods and start defrost a little bit of it and offering it as a treat in between meals and, you know, for a couple of days or so just to see how they do with that and then slowly increase while decreasing the other but, you know, you can certainly start adding some sardines and a little bit of eggs and things like that. The only thing um, that, you know, I would caution is because some people will do that long term. You know, I get people, they come and they say, well, I'm feeding this type of kibble and then I'm adding chicken breast. The problem with that is that it, it, you're basically taking a balanced food, which is the kibble, and you're adding more protein, which then ends up with an imbalance. You know, and, and I don't recommend doing that long term because then we can end up with, with issues with phosphorus and, and calcium levels and, and things like that. So it would be more of a short, shorter term sort of um, change or, that, yeah, you know, addition that I would do. Um, I, I'm more of a proponent of feeding a, a fully balanced diet, you know, as, as much as possible. Obviously, there's always, you know, we never know if the animal is really getting everything they need, no matter what food it is, because some animals will have a deficiency in one thing and others in, a, in something else. So um, it's, it's a, you know, estimate <laughs> that we kind of go by. And I think you guys have talked about that quite a bit in the different talks on your Q&A last night as well. Um, but yeah, certainly, I mean, adding some fresh foods is certainly a good way to start transitioning over. Um, One of the things that I do find with when you are transitioning diets or if you are adding things like toppers, making sure that you're not adding more than like 15 percent. So you're removing some of that kibble and not adding more than that because you can unbalance. But here's a really crazy thing I've seen with some of my patients. So I, we talked a lot about it last night and they talked about it yesterday, Matt Rowe and Ava Frick with that that hair tissue mineral analysis mm -hmm. test, where I have dogs that and cats who are on raw food diets that are balanced from great companies that I recommend and I like and trust, and they're mm -hmm. doing the testing. And then I also have patients that are on kibble diets that are balanced and decent brands. And when we check their actual, like their fur test, and we look at their minerals, I am blown away by how many pets are low in things like calcium and magnesium when we're looking that over that three month process, what's going, that cellular health in the body. And it goes back to what you just said, Dr. Odette, is that we're all being exposed to different toxins and chemicals. And if people have not watched Dr. Katie Congas' talk on glyphosate, definitely watch that and the, the environmental toxins and a lot of the research that's been shown, how it's affecting our pets and our own health and our microbiomes, because that's going to affect the absorption of different foods, the minerals, it's going to change how she talks about taurine and the whole, she touches a little bit on the grain-free DCM heart issue. Um, and so we have to look at each pet as an individual, each pet lives in a different environment, and each pet has a different stress burden, and as also has a different genetic makeup, which does play a small part, um, but it plays 
it plays a part and that's going to affect each pet. And so I think that's where it comes back to, I see some people asking like, how do you know if you should check like an animal biome test or look at their microbiome or do that fur test? This is something where I like adding it in every year. It's like part of the wellness and you get a better idea. It's like your car, right? where you're driving your car and you're like, I think it's running fine. And you don't like lift up the hood and look for the oil and other factors that make that car run well. And you're just assuming it's fine because it hasn't broken down on the side of the road. And then all of a sudden it's like the engine is steaming and you're trapped on the side of the road. So don't wait for that to happen because we can get an idea of how the internal system is working through that blood work, through the animal biome test, through the fur tissue test, through working with doctors that do physical therapy, they're hands on, you can get a feel for what is the energy? What does their body feel like? What are the muscles? What are the nervous system doing? And how is it behaving? And then you can do adjustments, you can do acupuncture, you can do things that are going to help optimize that immune system and, and physical health too to keep them healthy in the long run. Right. And that's why, you know, some, I have some people who have like two dogs from the same litter, and one will have normal vitamin D levels and the other one will be significantly deficient. So every individual, every animal is an individual and will have different absorption of certain things. And so it's not an exact science, but we want to provide at least the minimum, you know, required and then do some additional testing that you just mentioned. But even that with the hair mineral analysis, it's it's limited because it only tests for so many things, you know, but there's so much more in, in, in the world. And that's why I like to focus a lot on, on the microbiome because the microbiome is like a chemical factory and it outnumbers the body by a factor of 10, you know, there are 10 times more microbes than cells. And on a genetic level, it outnumbers the body by a factor of hundred to 150. So who's running the ship? So if we can, you know, make sure that microbiome is as healthy and as diverse as possible, then we, we have a better chance that the animal is actually getting all the nutrients that it really needs.